So today we're going to be talking about why your 35mm rangefinder might not be working quite properly. So hello everybody and welcome back. Hit the subscribe button if you are not already and like this video if you find it useful. Now let's get into the topic of today's conversation. So today specifically we're going to be talking about my experience with the Olympus 35 SP shooting some low ISO film. And by low I mean extremely low, uh, so low that it's ISO 1.6. Uh, specifically, I am talking about the Film Photography Project, their low color negative film. Uh, this is ISO 1.6 film. I recently shot this in the Bahamas. Uh, I went down there to shoot a wedding. And so I took the Olympus 35 SP just because I wanted something compact, simple, uh, just for the little time we had on the beach hanging out. So I took that with the ISO 1.6 film because I knew it was going to be extremely bright, extremely sunny the entire trip. So there's going to be plenty of light to shoot this. But I did run into some issues once we got to the development, which we'll get to here in the end, which also ties into the issues you might have with your 35mm rangefinder. But first, let's talk about the Olympus 35 SP, go over some of that, and then as well as shooting the ISO 1.6 film. So as a rule, with shooting ISO 1.6, you're going to probably have to shoot fully manual. Now the ISO speeds for the Olympus 35 SP go from 25 all the way to 800. So obviously, right out the gate, you can tell that's not gonna work for this film. So I am gonna have to meter separately and shoot fully manual on the camera. Luckily though, even though this is a compact rangefinder camera, you can shoot this in full manual. You can also shoot it in fully automatic. The Olympus 35 SP has a 42 millimeter F 1.7 G Zuko lens. It is a fantastic lens, it is a fantastic camera. If you're familiar with Ken Rockwell, uh, he does a lot of different camera uh, breakdowns on his website. He talks about this one specifically comparing it to Leica's and believe it or not, he prefers this over Leica's in a lot of different ways because you get a fast lens as well as a sharp lens all in one at a nice compact speed, uh, whereas you can kind of have to have a few separate lenses to do that on a Leica system. Now I know I've talked about the Konica 3A, which is still my favorite, but when I want something simple that's gonna do the settings for me or I want a built-in meter or anything like that, I go to the Olympus 35 SP. So again, this is a 42 millimeter lens, so it's gonna be tighter than a 35 mil, but also wider than a 50 mil. So you kind of get that happy medium. So theoretically, it should be closest to what your eye sees. For the shutter speeds, you have bulb all the way to one over 500. F-stops, you have 1.7 all the way to F16. As again, I said, your ASA goes from 25 all the way to 500. And it's just very easy all right here on the front dial. As you can see, you just rotate it uh, till you get to where you want it. You can rotate all the way to A for automatic on both of these. And then you're shooting fully automatic. Or you can adjust them separately to change your aperture and ISO as well. Very simple, very easy. They are different sizes. Uh, they have grip on them as well. So it's very easy to kind of go back and forth between the two. I know a lot of problems I've had with other rangefinders is not knowing which ring I'm on, adjusting aperture or shutter speed. And it can be difficult. Uh, you can't find out where the actual ring is. It's got a nice little lever there that's quick and easy to adjust your focus. And that is a different, and there's a little spacer in between that and the aperture. And then of course it drops down from the aperture to the shutter speed, so you know you've dropped down again to a different ring. So it makes it much easier and much quicker to adjust your settings on the fly compared to having to turn your camera up, constantly looking to see what you're doing because you can't get that grip right adjusting it here. It has exposure lock. It has a spot meter. It is center weighted for the light meter. So it's probably about a 60-40 split. It has a timer. It has flash sync up to one over 500. The downside is it does use those old mercury batteries, but it is very easy to update that with the newer uh, Vine, Wine, whatever you want to call it. I think it's German, which would be Vine, W-E-I-N, the EPX625 battery will be the best replacement for the old mercury batteries that this takes. Really easy to access. Your viewfinder, big, bright, your rewind, your advanced level, your hot shoe right there, focus, flash sync port. It's all just super compact. Uh, it's a fantastic 35 millimeter rangefinder. So a lot of people kind of compare this to the Canonet QL. So I actually have that one right here. So if you put them side by side, you can see the Olympus 35 SP. It's just a little bit longer than the QL. I wouldn't say it's significantly, uh, but it is definitely noticeable. Height-wise, though, they're basically the same. Not a whole lot of difference there. 
Uh, the Canonet has the 40 mil 1.7, the 35 SP has the 42 1.7. So again, very similar in those aspects as well. Personally, I think that it is easier to adjust and move around between the Olympus 35 SP than the Canonet. From what I've been able to gather, what people have told me, what I've researched, what I've seen online, the Olympus 35 SP is going to have a little bit better build quality, which makes sense to me because it has a bigger body in general. Usually when you start making a more compact body, you start sacrificing higher quality parts for smaller plasticky parts. Also, a lot of people argue that the Olympus 35 SP is the better camera and with better image results as well. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison at some point, although I'm not sure if that would be really fair since I only have the Canon at QL. And I feel like most people compare it to the Canon at QL3, I believe is the top-notch model of the Canon at series. So I almost forgot to talk about the viewfinder on the Olympus 35 SP. Uh, it's a nice, big, bright viewfinder, definitely substantial, uh, more than capable of getting the shot and nailing your focus. It's got a nice focus patch in the center. Your uh, exposure value is up on the top, so if you match up your aperture and your shutter speed to make sure you get the proper exposure, the camera tells you that. Looking through the viewfinder, uh, you can see the edge of the lens here. Now, your shutter speed and the aperture that you pick are going to be in the center of the lens. So you can see the red hash marks there that line up according to when and what you pick for your aperture and shutter speed. Uh, they'll line up right on that line there. But that doesn't line up in the window here. So you can see some numbers right there on the edge of the lens as it sticks into your viewfinder, but those numbers don't necessarily mean anything. It would have been nice. Uh, of course, it's more difficult seeing it's not centered. I know with, I think it's the X700, the head kind of pops over the lens, so it shoots down and you can see the exact aperture that you're at, which is nice. A little bit different, a little bit more difficult to do that on the rangefinder type cameras, um, but it would have been nice to be able to use that somehow. Another thing is this does not have the parallax correction. For example, like the Konica 3A that I have that I really like uh, has that. Uh, I think as well as the Kony Omega I talked about previously also has parallax correction. This does have hash marks for your close focus as well as your infinity focus. So you just kind of have to gauge it in between those two marks for your distance as far as composing your image. But it doesn't have the automatic parallax correction that you see in some other models. It really would have taken it to another level if it did have that but I don't see it as a big negative that it doesn't. So really quickly, if I was to grade the Olympus 35 SP, for lens quality, I would definitely give it the four to five range. Build quality, I'd have to go with a four. Features, I'm kind of on the fence between four to five. It has a lot in there, um, and honestly, it probably should be a five. So that's kind of my range there. And then versatility, I'm gonna have to go with a four. The only reason it's not a five is because it is a fixed lens 35 millimeter rangefinder. Uh, and versatility for me, a lot of that has to do with being able to change your lenses. Although this does have that nice 42, which is between the 35 and 50. So now let's talk about shooting the ISO 1.6 film. Now remember, you do need a fully manual camera to shoot a film like this. And you definitely can't do it in any camera that reads your DX coding. What do I mean by that? Uh, for example, the Olympus styluses, cameras like that, they read the code on the canister film to automatically pick your ISO. With this, you're not gonna be able to do that because it's not gonna read your ISO or if it'll pick 100 or automatically pick a certain number and none of your shots are gonna come up properly. So you need a camera that you can manually choose your settings and it's not gonna automatically pick your ISO and you can forget using your internal meter. So I've shot with the Olympus 35 SP once before. I took it home for the holidays, uh, put a roll of black and white T-Max to it and I loved how the shots came out, I loved how they looked but just none of them were quite in focus. It seemed like I just missed ever so slightly on just about every one of them. Uh, and I chalked it up to me just not being familiar with the camera, uh, not knowing it well enough, and just being rusty with my rangefinder, focusing, uh, shooting a lot of indoors, low light type stuff. So that was a mistake. I should have dived in a little bit further to that. So as you're looking at these shots here of the 35 SP, you'll notice that again, a lot of them just seem a tad out of focus or the focus isn't what it should be on, more or less. I primarily shot at 1 25th of a second, and some of these I shot at 1 60th. I tried to take 1 25 though, just because I don't want any shake. With a leaf shutter though, you can get away with a lower speed because you're not gonna have as much shake, 
so I probably should have shot all of this at 1 60th of a second for the most part. Uh, but these are unedited in their TIFF files. I sent these off to a lab to develop, so I can go back and kind of bump the exposure. I could DSLR scan these to get more out of it as well. And then also you'll notice there's some vignetting. I haven't had that happen before with the 35SP, and I haven't shot ISO 1.6 film before. So I'm assuming it's because the film is slightly underexposed, uh, and so it's not getting that full light. But again, that vignetting, I could fix some of it, but I'm pretty sure it's just because the exposure was just a tad low shooting ISO 1.6. Obviously I shot at 1.7 aperture the entire time to make sure I got enough light. You can see this picture of Jack. It's just the focus should be of course right on her face. I have perfect light, easy to see. She's not moving. It should have been perfectly in focus, but it's just behind her that's in focus. And that goes the same for just about every shot. You can see here they should have been in focus and that sand on the edge there just behind them is in focus. There are a lot of different things that can go wrong with 35 millimeter cameras to throw off your focus. Uh, for example, you could have something wrong with the actual lens. Maybe the elements are out of line, maybe they're loose, uh, maybe the tolerances are right and you have a bad lens in general. The pressure plate in the film back could have come loose and not be applying enough pressure. But the difference with SLRs is you're looking through the mirror directly at your subject. So I mean, of course you could have something where the ground glass is out of place or maybe your mirror or something like that. Uh, but it's different with rangefinders. With rangefinders, you're not looking through this lens. You're looking over here. So inside the top plate here, there's a few different mirrors and pieces of glass that calibrate your focus and allow you to adjust it so that your focus here matches up with the focus in the lens. Now over time, these cameras get old, things get loose, things vibrate, things shake, things come out of place. So the issue here is that one of those elements has come out of place. Whether a mirror has dislodged or it's just gradually moved and moved and moved and gotten further out of place from shaking or being stored and moved around and not being used in so many years. So those elements have come out of alignment, meaning that the focus that I see in the viewfinder is different than the focus in the lens. So how do you fix that? Well, I don't recommend you personally do that yourself. Uh, if you don't have any knowledge about taking these apart, because if you start taking buttons and all that stuff apart, putting it back together can be rather difficult. And it's better to have a camera that's a little bit out of focus than a camera that doesn't work at all, I would think, or a bunch of pieces everywhere because you can't get it back together. But the proper way to fix it is to set the camera on a tripod, measure your distance to a subject, set up, I don't know, some sort of object, another film camera or something or whatever, measure that distance and know what that exact distance is for your focus. Keep it there and everything like that. Then, then you take off that top plate, whatever buttons and everything like that, and that's gonna expose the mirror system. And then depending on the model, and everything like that, those mirrors will need to be adjusted as you look through that viewfinder until your focus matches up with the distance that you have set on the lens and the distance you have measured to your subject. That is going to recenter your focus and make sure that you get an accurate focus from there on. So if your 35 millimeter rangefinder isn't focusing properly, honestly, that's probably what it is. Again, it can be several different things, but with rangefinders, that tends to be the most common thing to happen to knock them out of focus. So comment down below, let me know if you shot any really low ISO film, 1.6, anything below 25, let me know. I'm curious, I wanna try some other low ISO films. Uh, so let me know if you shot any of that. Also, if you have a preference between the Olympus 35 SP and the Canonet QL, I'd be curious to hear uh, what your thoughts are on those two cameras as well. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe for future videos, and I will see you in the next video.